Well, good afternoon. If I could call the meeting to order and ask uh, Chaplain Christine Dumont to uh, lead us in the invocation, please. And welcome, by the way. Thank you. Let us bow our heads for the invocation. I ask blessings on these people gathered here today who have been called to lead the medical community at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. May they use resources wisely and well to represent all members of our community fairly. Help them to recognize their responsibility to the past and to the future. Let them be present to the rights and needs of both individuals and community and make decisions that promote the common good. May their efforts be blessed with insight, guided by understanding and wisdom, and may their personal faiths give them strength. As trusted servants, let them experience blessings on their deliberations and on their efforts here today. And let us say, Amen. Thank you. I have a statement to read regarding uh, public comment. Any citizen desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary over here. If the citizen's comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in this meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard towards the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, and other persons seeking hospital contracts award on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of invitation to bid, request for proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the board, the medical staff, administration, and legal counsel to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not entertain comments on or discussion or negotiate claims at this meeting. All righty, thank you. Uh, let's start with a motion to approve the orders of the day. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the orders of the day. Do we have a second? Second. Any comments? All those in favor, signify by saying yes. Yes. Opposed, yes. no. All righty. Next, I ask for a motion approving the minutes of the September 17, 2018 meeting. So moved. Second? Second. Uh, any corrections, changes, or whatever? All righty. Uh, all those in favor of the uh, minutes as presented, uh, please signify by saying yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Opposed, no. All right. We don't have any board reports. So with that in mind, I would ask Dr. Gardner to introduce Dr. Seaman for our uh, presentation today. Thank you very much. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Dr. Seaman, who I've been working uh, with uh, very closely over the past year as the uh, incoming chief of staff. Uh, Joe is here to present an update on bronchoscopy. He's from Wright State, uh, did his residency at the University of Cincinnati, and is working as a pulmonary and critical care uh, physician at our great institution. So he's been here since 2012. Let me introduce you to Dr. Seaman. Well, thank you all, and I really appreciate the opportunity and privilege to come and speak to you today about uh, upcoming bronchoscopy changes at Sarasota Memorial Health System. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and see if I can work the controller. So uh, what I want to do today is give you a little bit of background about bronchoscopy, uh, discuss a little bit about the evolution of bronchoscopy over the decades, um, and I want to specifically mention several areas where there's been evolution uh, structured around <coughs> new technology or new equipment. Uh, and we're going to finally close with robotic bronchoscopy, which is the new frontier of bronchoscopy. So diseases within the chest uh, are, are sometimes complex uh, and can be associated with numerous other health conditions. Uh, many advanced lung diseases require biopsies or tissues uh, removed from the lung to be uh, examined 
uh, in further detail under a microscope by a pathologist. And bronchoscopy is one means by which to obtain a airway biopsy or a lung biopsy by going through the airway through the mouth. The field of bronchoscopy has existed for more than 50 years. Uh, early uh, bronchoscopic um, tests were done through hollow tubes, and now it's a much more complex um, system. Technological advancements over the years uh, have typically uh, been associated with new equipment uh, and new technologies. Each of these new um, uh, technologies uh, tended to pivot the field and make it more advanced. Uh, early bronchoscopy, as I alluded to earlier, was done through a rigid hollow tube where a uh, bronchoscopist uh, or an endoscopist would use a light at the end and focus with a, a small um, mirror to, to be able to see into the airway. But uh, other than just looking into the airway and maybe taking a couple of surface biopsies, that was the limit. In the late 1960s, there was a new bronchoscope that came out called a flexible bronchoscope that allowed for a, a camera to be inserted through the nose down into the airway but that did not allow for biopsies. Uh, we could look into the airway, but no biopsies could be taken. In the 1970s, the addition of a working channel now allowed for uh, biopsy uh, tools to be inserted through the bronchoscope and could go out into the lung to obtain biopsies. Uh, this bronchoscope still had some limitations. You had to look through an eyepiece, uh, and it was very limited in that manner, and there was only one size of the early bronchoscopes. In the 1980s through the 1990s, there were several adjustments and, and improvements made on the early bronchoscope. Um, the uh, imaging was enhanced. You could uh, use a monitor instead of just the eyepiece. Uh, there was an expansion in the number of types of different scopes, and there was new biopsy instruments that could be used through these scopes. But there was no fundamental major development uh, that was new to flexible bronchoscopy. Right around 2000 through 2005, there was a new uh, bronchoscope developed called an endobronchial ultrasound. What this did was place an ultrasound on the tip of the bronchoscope so that a bronchoscopist could look at the other side of the bronchial wall. That now gave us a better uh, target to sample lymph nodes in particular, and this played a key role in advancing lung cancer staging uh, and lung cancer management. Um, we fortunately have had this technology at Sarasota Memorial for over 15 years and uh, use it on a regular basis. Around 2008 through 2012, there were some major changes made uh, through computer technology that allowed electromagnetic navigation uh, to enhance the um, bronchoscopist in obtaining tissue from small spots in the outer third of the lung. What would happen is, is the patient would lay on a magnetic field and have certain magnetic instruments um, or detectors on the chest wall uh, in space be recognized by the computer. The computer would have uploaded into it a CAT scan which would make a map of the chest and using a locatable guide we would be able to navigate to where these lesions are. This had a lot of setbacks uh, largely because the uh, bronchoscopist still had to hold the, the camera, still had to use the manual movements of the bronchoscope to be able to obtain biopsies. So the accuracy was still somewhat um, less than desired. But we've had this technology here at Sarasota Memorial for about nine to ten years and use it frequently. The next major advancement in bronchoscopy is going to be utilizing a robot during the procedure. Uh, here we see three different pictures of the, the robotic system uh, called the Monarch uh, RS robotic uh, bronchoscopy system that we've acquired and will be using after the first of the year. Here uh, the bronchoscopist is using a touch screen to integrate the CAT scan images with the anticipated real-time images to plan the bronchoscopy. On the left is the actual system with the two arms of the bronchoscope uh, that will be used to help advance the catheter, camera, and biopsy material into the lung. Why this uh, technology is going to advance the field of bronchoscopy is because now there are going to be static movements that it can be held and precision for long periods of time by the robot itself. Here we see a, a close-up of the, the controller, which in many respects looks like a Game Boy type controller with different buttons and knobs that is used to advance the catheter. The bronchoscopist can stand three feet, ten feet away from the patient while this is going in. 
Um, in the lower left, we actually see the catheter with a guide and camera on the end of it that's used to advance into the patient. And in the lower right, uh, we see a, an actual patient with a robot at the head and the bronchoscopist focusing on the uh, imaging and all of the different technologies that it's using to go out and take pieces of the lung tissue. In addition to diagnostic maneuvers uh, that will be employing this technology, uh, within the next couple of years, this company is working on ablative technologies for early stage lung cancer, meaning that after the patient is diagnosed, potentially in the same setting, they could have a, a microwave ablation catheter inserted through the bronchoscope and have their early stage lung cancer treated simultaneously. Um, we anticipate uh, being part of that research program uh, that the uh, ORS company is going to be undertaking. But again, uh, we are going to be one of two facilities in 20, uh, physical year 2019 to acquire this technology in Florida and only one of 10 in the United States. So I'm very proud to, to report that. Um, and I'd be happy to take any questions about this new technology or bronchoscopy in general. Now, are you young enough to have had a Game Boy when um, you were younger? <laughs> so I'd never really played many uh, video games, but uh, my son has one. Uh, oh. and, and oddly enough, the, the Microsoft controller is the one that um, this controller was modeled off of because of ergonomics and, um, and so, so forth. So when we do our medical review of uh, your son will be coming in as an <laughs> allied, allied yes. professional for Yeah, uh, he's going to educate us on how to use the controller. There, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, thank you. Excellent presentation. Any questions? I just had a quick question. Uh, doctor, how much does one of these things cost? So um, the sticker price um, that included other sort of downstream agreements was somewhere on the magnitude of $550,000. Um, that, that is just for the device uh, and some purchaser agreements for um, follow-up care. Uh, each of the biopsy kits that we're going to be using are likewise purchased um, sort of separately. Um, but yeah, it's an expensive piece of technology. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, Any other questions? Dr. Thiemann. Seaman, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, David. <laughs> David, you've got some awards for us uh, to go over today, uh, starting with the Excel Award. So um, I am uh, happy to be able to uh, introduce you to uh, Sandy Stoll uh, Bainbridge. Sandy, come join me. Come stand over by me. So Sandy, uh, Sandy Bainbridge is our ex October Excel Award winner. She's an administrative assistant in cardiac and neuroprogressive care services, and she's been with Sarasota Memorial since 2007. Sandy's coworkers say she deserves this recognition for many reasons, starting with the one that we all can relate to, the whole team notices when Sandy's not here, right? <coughs> That's always a high compliment. <laughs> she is described as a taskmaster who, who accomplishes her work uh, responsibilities with amazing speed and accuracy. Sandy doesn't stop the, until the job is completed and completed well, her coworkers say. She eagerly takes on new challenges and responsibilities, including becoming chair of the Administrative Assistance Executive Council. Her coworkers admire how, how she mentors and trains our new AAs at the hospital. Sandy is kind, caring, and generous with her time and knowledge. She also knows how to get things done, so naturally, she's always a go-to person. Sandy, thank you for everything you've done for us in the Sandy, it's my privilege uh, on behalf of the board to present this Excel award plaque to you. And if I may read it, Excel recipients are employees who are models of excellence and consistently demonstrate the mission, vision, and values of our organization. They are superior performers that make an extra effort in the quality and care of our patients and families in the community. Hospital board and administrative staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System recognizes Sandy Stoll Bainbridge with the Excel Award for the month of October 2018, signed by our president and our chairman of the board. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. The microphone is yours. Good afternoon. I didn't really prepare a speech. I just want to say that I feel very fortunate and I'm grateful to work for this wonderful organization and the 
people that I work with on a daily basis. Um, I also have a great team of administrative assistants that keep everyone on track at SMH, and uh, I couldn't do it without all of them. I appreciate this honor. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Well deserved. Congratulations. <laughs> I brought my husband and my sister today. Um, hey, they are. <laughs> those are the two that hold me together. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. And David, I understand we have a hero award today. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Chairman, we do have a hero award today. So I'd like to invite Dr. Um, Ar um, Alberto uh, Soy Soyano to join me. Yeah, sorry. I hope that's <laughs> stand up here. I'm going to talk about you for a second. Sure. Is that all right? So Dr. Soy Soyano is our Hero Award recipient for October. He's an internal medicine physician who recently joined Sarasota Memorial uh, as a first physician's group hospitalist. When you're a physician, trying to enjoy a little downtime with the family isn't always a day at the beach. Well, until it is. Just ask Dr. Soyano. He was enjoying a beach day here with his family when three swimmers apparently caught up in rip currents were brought uh, to shore needing immediate medical attention. Dr. Soyano's, Soyano's first, assisted, first assisted a child who had a pulse but was turning blue. He performed CPR, CPR then turned the, boy, the boy's over boy's care over to a nurse who had also been nearby. The doctor then went to assist a man and woman also in serious medical distress who turned out to be the child's parents. All three family members vacationing from out of town were quickly dispatched to the hospital with the Coast Guard assistance. The boy was airlifted to Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital while his parents were admitted here. And I'm happy to report after a few days of care, all three recovered and were reunited. This is a true survival story uh, that may not have happened if it were not for your rapid response. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite, quite a story. Yeah. On behalf of the board, uh, I'd like to present this uh, plaque, the Hero Hall of Fame, which will be displayed here in the hospital. The hospital board and administrative staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System hereby inducts Dr. Alberto Soyano into the Team SMH Hero Hall of Fame for actions that capture the essence of true hero, including courage to have persistency in the face of fear, passion to always do the right thing, integrity to have a strong moral compass, and concern to have a concern for the well-being of others, signed by our president and our chairman. Congratulations. Yeah, Terrific. Yeah, thank you. The microphone yeah, is yours. Uh, sure. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is just surreal to me. I, you know, I, I, it just my actions. It just came from my heart when I saw that that little kid, you know, coming out of the beach, not breathing, and and I just ran into and tried to do the best, uh, and 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 hopefully, you know, things uh, uh, turn out uh, pretty well. Uh, and and actually, when I, I went in there, I didn't expect that there wasn't going to be two more people afterwards. So I spent you know quite a lot of time in there. Um, and yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, I'll carry this with 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 pride. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad I recently joined uh, the group. Uh, you know, I, I just want to thank the you know the directives of first physician group for giving me the chance to join the you know the this uh, fantastic organization and and uh, you know and I'll continue to do the best I can. Well, you know. got a good start. Yeah. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Garner, anything yes, from the medical staff? Uh, no, sir. This has uh, been an uneventful year thus far, so there you go. very, very happy. Well, I'm not going to let you get away. Uh, this is your last meeting, and I think David has a couple comments he'd like to make. So, Dr. Gardner, I just wanted to take a moment and um, tell you on behalf of the hospital and the board um, uh, and how, how much it's meant to us to have you. Uh, as our chief of staff, I've had the privilege of calling you friend for a number of years, yes, sir. and and it is a um, it's been a true honor to serve with you for the last year and 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 ongoing in your other roles that you've had here. But um, just thank you for everything you've done. You've um, 
brought a, a, a great amount of uh, respect uh, representing the, med the medical staff board, and uh, we very much appreciate everything. So thank you. Thank you. It's been a little no applause. It's great. This has been a, a really uh, eye-opening experience. It's been a wonderful experience in seeing this side of how this hospital runs. And, and I can say without a doubt that everybody who uh, has been kind of helping me along the way has just been phenomenal. Uh, I couldn't have done it without them. Um, so I appreciate everybody that has been able to allow me to do this. It's been really a great experience. Thanks. Thank you. Well done. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, next up is the foundation report. Mason Ayers, you've had a, a very busy week this week, huh? It's been eventful in the foundation. Um, I want to thank everyone that was with us last Thursday night for the Key to the Cure event. Um, it was an amazing evening. Um, I can put away my pink tie now for <laughs> another year. Um, you know, it benefits the SMH Women's Cancer Program, and uh, we sold over 900 tickets this year. Uh, for the event. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks out to Saks Fifth Avenue for hosting us again this year. They do an amazing job. Um, we don't have the final numbers quite yet on the fundraising. Uh, Saks had a couple in-store promotions this weekend for Key to the Cure, so we're still kind of tallering, tallering up um, what those numbers are going to look like. Um, but I just want to once again express my thanks to the board and the community for being well done. It was an excellent, excellent event and fun. And uh, it's what I love about it is it, it really does capture a different segment of our community. And you get the young, I'll call it the young crowd out, <laughs> out for uh, an evening on the town. So it worked out very well. Job yes. well done. Yes, thank you. All right. Next up, Secretary's Report. Graham Hudson. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have the calendar for the month of November to share with the board and the general public. I uh, would remind everyone that Tuesday, November the 6th is election day and hospital board members are elected officials in Sarasota County uh, and election day will be held on November the 6th. On Tuesday, November the 20th, the board will conduct its annual meeting. This is traditionally held on the Tuesday due to election day. Uh, and so that it will be held on November the 20th instead of a normal Monday, if that is clear to everyone. At 9 o'clock, we will have the Governance Effectiveness Committee. At 10.30, the Finance Committee will meet. At noon, we'll have a closed session of the Hospital Board. Uh, at 12.30, we will have our financial review. And at 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock in this room, we'll conduct the board meeting. That's all we have for the month of November. Yeah, that sounds to be quite a bit anyway, so thank you, Trim. All right, uh, next is our treasurer's report. Uh, Sharon yes. Wetzel to Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a proposed motion. I move approval of the bad debts and charity care for the month ended September 30, 2018 in the amount of $23,236,000. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Anything else? That ends my report, Mr. Chairman. All righty. Thank you. All right. Now we move on to financial highlights. Bill Wojan, our CFO. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Um, because we keep the books open a little bit longer at the end of the fiscal year in preparation for our external audit, I don't have the revenue expense highlights, but I will go through some statistic highlights for the fiscal year. <clears throat> so these are um, for our fiscal year ended September 30, 2018. The hospital's average daily occupancy was 518 compared to a budget of 525. We had three 36,016 admissions compared to a budget of 34,619. And for the year, our acute average length of stay was 4.44, and last year, 4.52. <coughs> the hospital had surgery cases numbering 23,369 compared to a budget of 23,054. 
and there were 3,626 births compared to a budget of 3,562. The hospital had outpatient registrations of 451,247 compared to a budget of 440,999. And between the two ERs combined, we had emergency care center registrations of 122,942 compared to a budget of 123,716. And that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Any questions? Bill, thank you very much. Let's move on to the board committee reports. And first up is uh, Bill Noonan with the Quality Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Quality Committee met this morning, and as that's a closed meeting, I do not have a report. However, the committee did approve the organ and tissue donor policy, which now needs board approval. So therefore, I move approval of the organ and tissue donor procedure as recommended by the Quality Committee. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much. Next up is our uh, audit committee report from uh, Daryl Henry. Daryl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The meeting of the audit committee was held this morning, October the 15th. The minutes of the July 2018 Joint Finance and Audit Committee meeting were approved. Director of Audit Services, Mr. Mark Thornton, who's hiding in, in the back over there, trying to sit down, I can see him. Nice try, Mark, you're getting away. <laughs> Reviewed the Audit Service Annual Audit Plan for 2018 and 2019. <clears throat> I move approval of the 2018-2019 Audit Plan as recommended by the Audit Committee. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Mr. Chairman, if I may conclude, and Mark Thornton also provided an update on the following 2017-2018 internal audit projects. Construction contracts for Sarasota Memorial Oncology Inpatient Center. Interim testing of the 2018 SMART plan, which for those who don't realize is Merit Awards Promotions plan for employees here. And describe the FEMA application process as a result of Hurricane Irma. And he also described the FEMA application process, Section 404, which is a FEMA preparedness for future events plan. An audit of identity management and controls, and he did the audit of a cybersecurity control, which you may uh, have been recently experienced on, your hope not, on, on your own equipment, <laughs> but certainly in the news you've heard about cybersecurity. Mr. Thornton is very active in the topic of cybersecurity areas, this entire organization. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, next up, we have the Mission and Planning Committee report, Greg Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This morning, the Mission and Planning Committee met, and Bill Wolgen started out with uh, presenting the purchase of the 1741 Main Street building. To begin the presentation, uh, he took us through the current space challenges our, our system is facing due to rapid growth in the past few years. He detailed the pressing clinical expansion needs of the organization, along with the existing fragmentation of our support services department. <clears throat> As a solution, Bill proposed the purchase of a support services building off campus. By re relocating support services department, the space gained can be used for clinical expansions. The former Herald Tribune, Tribune building at 1741 Main Street is a three-story building located in downtown Sarasota. To meet our needs, the building and site will require minimal renovations and an additional parking deck. 
the facility is expected to reach full capacity for support services by June of 2019. At this time, I move approval of the purchase of the building located at 1741 Main Street in Sarasota for a project expense not to exceed $17,339,000 as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, next up. Okay, the second item was uh, Roy Lang, our chief operating officer, presented a blood bank testing services, and she began the presentation with the current state of blood bank testing services provided at Sarasota Memorial, which currently contracts with uh, Suncoast Blood Bank. Next, she discussed the opportunity to insource this service, and insourcing blood bank testing would allow for centralization of laboratory services, enable cross-training, and create opportunity for the laboratory at Laurel Road Hospital and improve patient safety. Blood bank testing is scheduled to go live on October 1st of 2019. And at this time, I move approval of the approved project, uh, approval of the project amount not to exceed $1,300,000 to insource blood bank testing as currently budgeted in fiscal year 2019 as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. Second. I have a, a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Our final item um, was the presentation to the committee of resolution authorizing the amendment of the Sarasota Memorial Hospital 457B plan document. The Mission and Planning Committee recommends to the board to adopt the resolution as presented, and Carol Ann Kalish, our Chief Legal Officer, will now read the resolution for adoption. So this is a resolution titled Board Resolution SMH Healthcare Increase Statement of Sarasota Memorial Hospital 457B Plan. The undersigned hereby certifies that at a meeting of the persons entitled to make decisions on behalf of SMH Healthcare Inc., the employer, the following resolutions were improved, approved. Whereas the employer has maintained the Sarasota Memorial Hospital 457B plan, the plan, since 1031-1979 for the benefit of eligible employees, and whereas the employer has decided to restate the above referenced plan, now therefore be it resolved that the employer hereby adopts the Sarasota Memorial Hospital 457B plan as a complete restatement of the prior plan to be effective on 10-1-2018. Resolve, resolve further that the employer is authorized to execute the restated plan document and perform any other actions necessary to implement the adoption of the plan restatement. The employer may designate any other authorized person to perform the actions necessary to adopt the plan restatement. A copy of the plan restatement shall be retained in the business office of the employer. Resolve further that the employer will act as administrator of the plan and will be responsible for performing all actions necessary to carry out the administration of the plan. The employer may designate any other person or persons to perform the actions necessary to administer the plan. The undersigned, which will be your chair, hereby certifies that he, or he is duly elected or appointed official of the employer and that the foregoing is a true record of a resolution duly adopted at a meeting of the persons entitled to make decisions on behalf of the employer and that said meeting was held on today's date in accordance with state law and the bylaws of the above named employer. And so, Mr. DiVirgilio, if this is adopted, we'll sign this at the end of the meeting. At this time, I move adoption of the resolution as read, as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. We have second. A, we have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All righty. Well, thank you. Anything further? That ends my report. Thank you. There you go. All right. We have a president's report, David. Yes, sir. I'm going to start today as um, is our tradition uh, with our uh, and our report card, our organizational report card. This is for our fiscal year to, uh, ending uh, in September 2018. So this does have a whole 12 months of um, data in it. Our first goal is our HCAPs under our service pillar is our HCAPs goal of being um, eight out of 11 of the domains at greater than or equal to 50th percentile. 
Uh, for the year, we did come in a little bit short of that. We came in at six out of 11, and I'll show you the detail here in, in a minute. On the outpatient side, we had a goal of hitting um, uh, 55 out of 58 of the, of the doma outpatient domains at 50 percentile or greater. We came in uh, one short of that uh, at 54 out of 58. Once again, show you some more detail on that in a minute. In the people pillar, uh, we had a goal of hitting the turnover of our part-time and full-time employees that have been hired within the last uh, 12 months, uh, being a 25 percent um, uh, turnover rate or less. I am thrilled to report that we um, exceeded that and hit it 22.11%. Uh, percent. Uh, a lot of hard work by our staff went into that mm -hmm. and really dramatic uh, shift over the last two years. Okay, well done. That's, uh, Thank you. That, 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 that really, that's the managers, uh, day to day managers here and the, the vice presidents that made that happen. So we'll pass that along. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also in the quality p pillar, we have our, our organizational goals to have our infection prevention, uh, which is our combined overall standardized infection rate, be less than 0.95 when the expected or national average is 1.0. I gotta tell you, we are so far off of standard deviations on this at 0.72, it, 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 it really uh, is mind blowing. So uh, really our staff is to, to be thanked for that again. Um, really incredible um, service that they have done on that number to, to hit that infection rate. Well, David, please pass along because I know it is a critical item that the, the board looks at every single month and uh, have you guys set the bar where you have set it, <coughs> that's exceptional and thank you. I appreciate that comment um, and, and believe me, I know that you guys look at it um, in detail every month. So <laughs> we, we very much appreciate your stewardship with that. In the finance pillar, um, I will tell you that what we have here as, a, as the uh, indicators, our organizational finance, our operating margin, we have a goal of being at 5.4%, which was our budget this year. Um, we have an unaudited uh, number on, uh, that we're reporting today at 11.5%. Uh, I, I feel very sure that, that it will not be below that. Um, and, uh, but Bill would, Bill would hate me to, to actually say that, but we did put unaudited there so he can uh, finish closing the books. Uh, and, and I usually say, as our CFO reported, but as you remember in his report, he did not report any finances, so I, didn't, I can't give him credit for reporting today. So, uh, in our growth pillar, uh, we have two goals. We have a strategic growth uh, organization goals, our inpatient admissions and observation um, outpatients combined at 43,429. Uh, happy to report that we did exceed that. We're at 44,710 for the year and our outpatient registrations uh, being at 789,301 as our goal. We also exceeded that and came in at 794,506. So when we look at our HCAP scores, I, I, I'm presenting a little bit different uh, format today. Uh, you still see the 11 um, domains on the left-hand side. Uh, then you see the current national average for each of one of those domains, and then you see what our results have been for this past fiscal year by quarter. Uh, and obviously our, our busy quarters of the year are our second and third quarters uh, is when our season is. And you can see it gets, it gets challenging to hit all these domains during that period of time uh, is really when we went down into the six out of 11. I will tell you, uh, that our you know our staff is is acutely aware that that those are our numbers and and really have always strive to be at 11 out of 11, um, but we did have our numbers pop back up in fourth quarter to eight out of 11, um, still having having an, uh, a num a a, a uh, average for the year at six, but um, rest assured that that we do um, it is a bit seasonal uh, based on some volume numbers new year coming up with the construction we're going to have on this site some of those domains are going to be uh, I it's, think uh, uh, I think the board recognized they're going to be a challenge again cleanliness you know, and uh, quietness are going to be a, a difficult uh, uh, thing to achieve I guess is a better way to say it but you know something we still got to strive to get there well you're you're, you're there's, you're not wrong uh, by any stretch, uh, and as as we all heard at lunch when Lori talked to us about our, our just our challenges of parking alone uh, that are going to exist coming up this this uh, this December to accommodate the construction of the cancer center, uh, it's it's going to get it's going to get uh, challenging. Uh, we expect our volumes are going to go up again this year. 
Uh, we, we are happy to report that we'll have two new floors of private rooms come on, online uh, by the, both will be online by the end of December, uh, being 9 and 10 East Tower. Uh, so we do have some um, uh, good moves coming up, but, but there's no doubt it's going to be challenging. So appreciate your comments on that. On our outpatient uh, rep uh, system report card, I did the same thing. I showed the 58, um, well, the, the, the 58 different possible uh, scores that could happen. Uh, also showing where we did by quarter. So we went from 54 to 52 to 51 to 55. Uh, averages out, I think it was um, 54. Uh, yes, 54 for the year. Um, so once again, just like inpatient, we get a little bit um, challenged during season, but I uh, really want to give a, a great service to all of our patients' expectations throughout the year. So uh, staying in the service column, uh, our mother, baby, and pediatric staff celebrated their safety and support. Uh, the mother, baby team recently held a 20-year reunion uh, for SMH's mother, baby support group. Uh, celebrating two decades of providing education, resources, and support to new moms. Mother, baby, and pediatric staff joined the nation in recognizing safe, safe timber, raising uh, awareness about child safety issues and helping parents prevent serious issues and deaths from um, occurring. In the quality um, uh, pillar, Sarasota Memorial performed uh, over 1,000 heart surgeries uh, this year. Uh, we actually took an ad out in the paper uh, over this weekend, if you saw it, thanking our, our staff um, that all made that happen. Um, it's our heart team performed its 1,000th surgery in September uh, for this year, setting a record for the number of heart surgeries and TAVR procedures performed at the hospital uh, in just one year. At the same time, the, the team achieved the highest three-star quality ratings from, from uh, Society of Thoracic Surgeons uh, for adult heart surgeries, uh, one of very few in the nation uh, to, to achieve that. Uh, and since 2012, uh, Sarasota Memorial's annual surgery volumes have more than doubled from uh, 393 in just 2015 uh, to, two I mean, I'm sorry, from 393 just a few years ago to, two, uh, to 1,015 in this fiscal year. And it was not that long ago we hit the 393. I, I, I think it was, it was five or six years ago. So the fact that we over doubled that volume and it's all based on the quality and hit the highest quality standards is, is truly amazing what the team has done. And our cardiologist has also performed more than 6,000 catheter-based procedures this past year. Well, David, higher volume and the highest quality rate Next year, they'll come up with something to, to <laughs> keep moving the uh, moving that uh, benchmark up. So, well, once it, it, once well again, done. it starts it starts with our surgeons that work there. It goes to the nurses and the, and to the entire team that provides that service, and and um, um, really something to, for the system to be proud of. Staying in the quality pillar, um, it's that time uh, for flu shots. As our board is acutely aware. Uh, we uh, we, we um, shot them all up with flu shots uh, today at lunch. Uh, that was their price for lunch. So uh, we appreciate, uh, is, is in all seriousness, we appreciate the board um, showing the leadership uh, throughout the system um, because, believe me, people watch that and they know, they know that that goes on and, and trickles down. So the flu season runs from October through May. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control recommends a yearly flu vaccine as the first and most important step in protecting against the flu. Uh, and SMH conducts an annual flu vaccine campaign, as you witnessed today, started off today um, for the staff. I will add, you can also, um, the, the public can, can uh, frequent our urgent cares. We do give flu shots in the urgent cares and um, encourage everyone in this community to get that. Moving into the people uh, pillar, uh, SMH partners with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Uh, Sarasota Memorial recently launched uh, the Big Brothers, Big Sisters Beyond School Walls program. Uh, students from Booker High will meet with their SMH um, bigs for, the, uh, for six weeks to learn about the hospital, interviewing skills, teamwork, and customer service, and just want to really thank the staff who all volunteer and, and, and do this each and every year. Staying in the people column, uh, we have Breast and Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, Sarasota Memorial staff are participating in a full schedule of events this month to raise awareness for funds and funds. 
the Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Foundation's annual Key to the Cure event, uh, which uh, benefiting SMH cancer programs uh, took place, um, as Mason was saying, just on uh, October 11th in partnership with Saks Fifth Avenue. I do just want to take a moment, Mason. I thought it was a fantastic um, event. Uh, I, I'm always amazed that Saks lets us go in year after year, uh, but it, 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 that can't be a small thing for them to be able to pull off. And so we thank Th Saks Fifth Avenue for allowing us to keep doing that every year. And please thank your staff uh, because much like me, you're only as good as the people right there. <laughs> so, um, a special woman to woman uh, support group held on October 17th focuses on cancer treatment. It's in insomnia, and at Team SMH will be out in force for making strides against uh, breast cancer uh, October 20th fundraising walk. Uh, moving to the growth pillar, um, we were, had our, uh, we had some opportunity to share our new hospital plans at uh, Venice event. Uh, more than 200 attendees at the most recent business uh, showcase in, in uh, Venice learned about our plans uh, to open a new hospital on Laurel Road uh, to help improve access to care in South County. First Physicians Group um, uh, Family Practice and OB physician, OBGYN physicians also spoke with attendees and answered questions. Staying in growth, SMH partners on event to help uh, growing uh, numbers of families affected by dementia. SMH and community partners uh, will host a kickoff event on October 18th to encourage local businesses and individuals to join an initiative to make Sarasota County a dementia caring community. The goal is to wait, raise awareness of a growing number of families affected by Alzheimer's disease and res resources to assist them. Participants will receive free training in a dementia caring decal and a dementia caring decal to, to help people identify uh, local organizations committed to helping those living with those with the disease. So the future looks bright for SMH Urgent Cares, and to make that happen, uh, as as Peter Taylor told me earlier, we, we decided to go with uh, tennis ball of yellow uh, as our uh, new logo. Is that official, Peter? That's official. That's official. <laughs> Um, so hopefully you have noticed the new face of our urgent care brand uh, with the recent unveiling of our refreshed um, urgent care logo at all six locations. We, we and Peter, declare that the yellow is our new red. So why people have asked me, um, I, I usually get questioned about every 10 minutes about this, why the makeover? Uh, the change will better distinguish our urgent cares um, from other urgent care centers and our freestanding ERs. Uh, as we expand the SMH uh, brand footprint. And that is my report, uh, Mr. Chair. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions for David today? All right. Hearing none, David, I guess uh, that's, uh, that's the end of your report. Then. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, we don't have anything on the consent agenda today. Any public comments? No, no public comments. Anything further from our legal counsel here? No, no. Not at all. Anything else to come before this esteemed body? Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. All right. With that, we're all adjourned. Thank you very much. We'll see you next month.